Hello guys, in this video I want to prove this result, which I am going to use in the future. I want to say that the nullity of, if the nullity of A uh, is going to be just zero vector, or in other terms kernel, then I can say this matrix is invertible. And otherwise, if my matrix is invertible, then nullity of A is going to be just one zero vector. So which direction do you think is easier? I think like Z direction is going to be easier. So we're going to go from right to the left. So let's first try to prove this error. So what I know, I know that matrix is invertible. In other words, I can say that A inverse exists. And if it exists, it means that A times A inverse or A inverse times A is identity. And my goal is that I want to show that nullity of A is zero. So uh, there is one really nice tool or proof technique that we can use. Let's take just any element x in my null a. And I want to show that if I'm going to take any element, it's always going to be equal to zero. Uh, okay, so I know that x belongs to null a. Uh, from here, by definition of null a, it follows that a times x equals to zero. But here I know that my a inverse exists. So what, what can we do? We can multiply by n inverse from the left side uh, on the left for both sides. So I will get a inverse a x equals a inverse 0. And from here I can see that this is going to be identity and the right hand side is going to be just 0. And identity times x uh, is going to be just x equals to 0. So I can see whenever I'm going to take my element x in null to a, x is equals to zero. So from here I can get that null a is zero. Okay, and so we proved uh, this direction. And uh, let's prove other direction. Okay, so for other direction, we're given that null of a is just zero vector. And we want to show that A is invertible. Okay, so here's a couple of ways how we can think about A and how we can think about proving this result. But let's uh, think about A as a mapping between what? Between two vector spaces, Rn and Rn itself. So uh, this is our two vector spaces, Rn and Rn. And we can think about A as our mapping. Why? Because we take some element x here, we apply our matrix A on the left hand side, we're going to get y is uh, our outcome, and outcome is going to be over here. And this one, we're going to get this result by multiplying uh, A on the left hand side. Okay, so if you want to show that A is invertible, so we want to show that there is exist arrow backwards and A inverse. And we know that A is a function. And when do we know that the inverse for function exists? We know this is for sure exist when A is going to be bijective. So A uh, invertible exists when A is bijective, but A is bijective in if only if A is injective and A is uh, surjective. Okay, so our goal is, uh, we have two following goals. If we want to show that A is invertible, first we need to show that A is injective. Then we want to show that A is surjective. Then if they are injective and surjective, we're going to get that A is bijective. And since A is a bijective and A is a function, then we know so for a bijective function there is exist inverse function. Yeah. So we're going to be done if we're going to show just this two following thing that a is injective and a is surjective. Okay, so we want to show the following thing that a is injective and surjective. Okay, let's start with the first one. Let's show that a is injective. And what do we know? We know that we have nullity of a and we want to sh uh, uh, use the nullity of A uh, that this is just a zero vector to show that A is injective. 
let's recover the definition what, of injectivity. We're saying that A if injective if uh, the image of any two distinct elements and these elements in the result actually going to be the same. So let's actually check this, that uh, x equals to y. So let's take uh, any elements ax times, times uh, ax equals ay. And then I'm going to move this to the left hand side. I will get uh, ax minus ay. Here I can factor my a. I will get ax minus y. And what I know, when I move this to the left hand side, I know that the whole thing is equal to zero. So from here I will get that a x minus y equals to zero. But if x minus a times x minus y equals to zero, it means that x minus y belongs to nullity of a. So x minus y is an element of my nullity, but my nullity is just zero vector. So there is only one possible case where x minus y should be actually equal to zero vector. So x minus y equals to zero. So from here follows that x equals to y. And this is, uh, gave us that, that gave us uh, that uh, a is injective. So we started with this by our definition and we end up with the result that x equals to y. Okay, so the first one, check. Okay, let's check that a is surjective. So we think that a is surjective if we're going to take the whole space and we're going to map the whole space and the whole space is actually going to be equal to the space itself Rn. So we have two sets and if we want to show that two sets uh, are the same, we need uh, by using uh, one of the main tool or main technique, we want to show that A of Rn is a subset of Rn. But this one is obvious. Why? Because we take, uh, this is going to be just image uh, of Rn under A. So this is check. And another inequality, another, uh, another thing that we want to show is that Rn is a subset of ARN. And this one is way more difficult. So what does it mean that RN is a subspace of ARN? It means that if I'm going to take any Y in RN, I want to show that there is exist X uh, belongs to RN, such that uh, Y equals A of X. And since y is equals a of x, it means it belongs to Rn. So from here I will get uh, that y belongs to a Rn. So again, I'm going to repeat. So here I'm taking any elements in Rn. And I've shown that y equals to ax. So it means by definition when element belongs to a Rn when this uh, image is mapped by uh, matrix A. So this is what exactly I got. Okay, so my goal is to show this. If I'm going to show this, I will get this uh, properties that uh, Rn is a subspace of ARN. And since both of this true, I will get that ARN equals to Rn. And this is gonna give us that map is surjective. And we're going to get that A is surjective and injective, so A is, uh, is bijective. So for bijective function, A inverse exists, and our theorem is proved. Okay, and let's show this property. Uh, here I'm going to do one small trick. Uh, I want to show that for any element Y in Rn, there is exists element X, that this is true. Let's actually construct, uh, we, I'm going to use constructive proof. So let's take V1 and V1 since we have A n by n matrix is a basis is a basis of Rn. And then I'm going to create a new set uh, of vectors. I'm going to say let's take my matrix A multiply by V1. I will get W1. 
Let's take my matrix A multiply by, by V2. I will get W2. And so on. And let's take my matrix A multiplied by Vn. I will get Wn. And my claim is that if I'm going to take all these vectors, so I'm going to take vectors uh, W1 and Wn, I'm claiming that these vectors are actually is a basis of Rn. Yeah. If so, I'm claiming that this is a basis, and you will see in a second why do you need that this one is a basis. If I want to show this vector is a basis of Rn, where Rn is n-dimensional space, and I have n vectors, it's only sufficient to show that. Uh, these vectors are linear independent. Okay, and what is the definition of linear de uh, dependence? We're saying let's take constant C1, V1 plus Cn, Vn. I'm going to show that all these vectors W1, Wn is linear dependent if all these coefficient are going to be zero. So C1 uh, equals to zero up to Cn equals to zero. But what is the definition of W1? W1 is just A times V1. So from here we'll get, I have uh, C1, A times V1, plus C2, A times V2, plus Cn times A, Vn. And I know that this whole thing is equals to zero. So what I can do, I can, uh, since A is linear, I can write this as A times C1, V1, equal plus uh, three dots c n v n equals to zero and here again i'm going to use the definition of minority i can see that the whole thing uh, uh, let's name this uh, vector just uh, v and i can see that a v is equals to zero so from here follows that v belongs to null a but since the whole thing belongs to null A and null A consists only of one element, uh, zero vector, from here I can conclude that C1 V1 equals plus uh, Cn Vn equals to zero. But I'm given that these vectors are linearly independent. So uh, why is linear independent? Because we know this v, these vectors are a basis. So from here follows that C1 equals Cn equals to zero. And I'm done. Why? Because I showed, I took any, I took a linear combination of my w's and I got that all coefficient is zero. So from here follows that v w1, wn is linear independent. Okay. They are linear independent. And since we have n linear dependent vector in n dimensional space, there are bases. In last step, our goal is to show that uh, A is surjective. So this is our goal. And I know that I have right now two bases. I have uh, V as a basis and W as a basis. So, and if I want to show that A is surjective, I need to show that for any Y, I can find element X such that Y equals A times X. Okay, so let's take, my, let's take any element Y belongs to Rn. Since W1 and Wn are basis of Rn, then I can write my Y in terms of basis W1 and Wn. Uh, because this is a basis, so this was important to show that these vectors are basis of Rn. And then I'm going to use definition of Ws. So from here follows that Y1 equals A times V1 plus yn times a times vn and here i'm going to use uh, that i used before that a is linear so we'll get that a times y v1 plus y n v n and here and here i'm done why because if i'm gonna name this vector x From here, I will get that my y is equals a times x, where 
x equals y1 v1 plus yn vn. And we are done. So this shows that A is surjective, so check mark, and we know that A is injective, so A is going to be bijective, and A is also a function between, a linear function between two uh, n-dimensional ve vector spaces. So inverse, since A is bijective, inverse of this function exists, and if inverse exists, that means A is invertible. And we are done. Okay guys, thank you for watching. And in my next video, I'm going to use this result to discuss the definition of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Thank you for watching. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you for watching.